everybody. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Jessica Henry Gray and I'm excited to be back here with you this week. Today I'm going to show you how to paint this scene from Destin, Florida. It's a beautiful pond with some lily pads and this transition of morning light on this pond. All right, so I'll see you on the other side of this intro. Welcome to my YouTube channel. My channel primarily focuses on plein air painting. With over 30 years teaching experience, I find that plein air painting is so enjoyable and I love the adventure and travel and just getting out into nature that plein air painting allows. I focus on painting in a manner that teaches you the basics of plein air painting with efficiency, composition, and basically getting out and having a good time. Enjoy my videos and let's get out there and paint something beautiful. I am uh, in Florida, in Destin, Florida, doing my workshop, but I got out here a little bit early um, to do this uh, video. So there's this gorgeous pond and I'm excited to paint. So I'm gonna jump in and let's get going. Okay, so I'm gonna start out with just loosely drawing this in place. So I'm getting together a mixture here of a little bit of burnt sienna and ultramarine blue and I thin it down with some odorless mineral spirits. And I use a sort of like a pencil to draw on my composition. Taking into account the scene before me, um, I'm just gauging on my canvas exactly where I feel that the masses are best represented on my 8x10 canvas. When I start to feel satisfied with the blocked in placement of the objects, as well as their size and overall balance um, and the overall scene, I will at this point start by blocking in the major values as I see them, the darks, mediums, and lights. Working my way from the background to the foreground. So I like that block. And now I'm gonna just work on starting from the background to the foreground. Cadmium yellow into that. Maybe a little yellow ochre. I'll give it more of that early morning color. Might as well take that while I have it. Just put some in the water where I see it. There's a little bit of blue in that. This is also helping just to map out where my colors and values are gonna go. So this is a lighter passage.
here because it moved toward, moves towards us. How to work on some of these darker passages. These early morning studies really are a study in values. I know it's a little hard to see the colors that I'm actually using for this passage of the painting, but they are uh, more in the range of a little ultramarine blue, a little bit of yellow ochre, and then some white to cool it down. So they're slightly green, a little bit more cooler tone because there's a lot of atmosphere rising up between us and that distant shoreline. And edges, I want these edges back here to be really soft. As the trees go down and meet the shoreline, I darken the value a bit to indicate the passage under the trees and how it's more shadowed underneath there and the light is hitting the tops of the trees. Now to indicate that distant shoreline, I'll mix up a little bit of the cadmium yellow with some white to just sort of highlight where the sand meets the water and also to suggest that the light is hitting some of that grass far away. With the addition of a few suggested sky holes, it sort of opens up that forest back there and makes it feel a little bit more airy. I added the smallest touch of phthalo green to that cadmium yellow and white mixture to indicate the sunlight hitting that distant patch of grass way back there. establish an anchor. What is my darkest dark in this painting? So I'm gonna say it's gonna be down here where these lily pads are done closer. I know you can't see that but that'll help to establish this progression of values. As we go back in the distance, this already starts to fade to that sky blue. Now in this passage here with the water, one of the things that really drew me to the scene were these beautiful transitions of color and value as they were darker up close and then faded off into the distance. And that really gives the illusion of water surface when you can um, capture those things on canvas. So I'm watching very carefully how I apply my brush strokes in the context of the water surface as well as the value transitions. So watch those when you're out working on um, a passage like this with the water. That is just such a wonderful thing to get in a painting. A little bit of violet.
some of those darker value back in here too, just a little indicate the shoreline separation. Given that the water is leading us to the distant shoreline, it was important to me that I get that shoreline back there very believable. <clears throat> and so that's really why I'm taking some of the extra time to make sure that those edges all work together and that the contrast is just the right amount to draw the eye but not be distracting. Remember, the area, the eye is always drawn to the area of the greatest contrast. So if I look back there and observe those values in the distance the longer i look at them the darker they appear but when you're looking at your canvas you have to continually move your eyes around the whole scene to take in the variations of the values because our eyes can trick us into thinking something easy either darker or lighter than it actually is Now, as I'm blocking in for this island in the middle of this pond, I'm making it the darkest value that I see on that island, which of course is not as dark as the value that I see up in front where the lily pads are in that foliage right up front. So I'm gauging it just a little bit lighter to indicate that um, movement as the light goes back. So I'm blocking in the darkest value under the trees and in the wetness of the shore of that little island as it meets the water. And then um, considering that the trees are vertical, they will always be your darkest value in a scene because they are receiving the, the least amount of light. So I'm working on getting those established as well as down in the water. Now, reflections in the water are always going to be a little darker than what it is that they are reflecting. So taking all of that into account... I still want to gauge the difference of that value compared to the darkest value up front. So you always kind of have to be watching for things like that. Um, you, it's perfectly acceptable to put a piece of black, um, just paper, the blackest black you can get right next to your canvas on your easel, and then white. So you sort of have a, a perspective of your most extreme values off to the side. So as you um, tiptoe your way back in a painting, and you work on that digression of values, you sort of have a, a gauge there of your most extremes.
Finally, the moment I've been anxiously waiting for while um, working on this painting. I'm working now on the lily pads, making um, a green with cadmium yellow, ultramarine blue, a little touch of the phthalo green, but be very careful with that phthalo. It can really overtake everything right away. So just the tiniest bit with your cad yellow will give you a beautiful sort of Kelly green. Um, and I, when I was looking down at the lily pads, they had that lovely green color. And some of them were a little bit more yellow ochre olive green. And so for that, those lily pads, I used a little more yellow ochre and less of the phthalo green, which is a very like stoplight green. <laughs> um, so to vary those um, lily pads, I would alternate between a little yellow ochre or a little bit of phthalo or a little cadmium yellow just to mix up those green tones. And then of course, as they went further back from my view, I lessened the intensity and um, gave them a little bit more of a contrast. The contrast back there was, it was just like a dark little um, blob in the pond, which of course made it easy to paint, just a little indication of a lily pad.
right, just a few shines on the lily pads and there's not a lot left to do on this painting. So I personally wanted to thank you so much for joining me and be sure to check out the links below. I'm excited to offer all kinds of new things. So check those out and um, enjoy the rest of this video. Well, that wraps this up. I want to thank you so much for joining me. I really enjoyed painting this little scene and I hope that you enjoyed it too. All right, be sure to like and subscribe and be sure to check out those links below. All right, you guys, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.